Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at part two of the story of Addis and continue our look at this short Latin story. So again, this is coming from Easy Latin Stories from Beginners from George L. Bennett. You heard me say in part one of this video um, what Bennett calls easy and, and for beginners I wouldn't necessarily say um, are that easy and not also for beginners. So if you haven't heard this before, I always say that Bennett's work is probably best suited to the Latin two range, maybe two or three depending, but it takes a little bit of, um, I would say more of an intermediate immediate um, Latin student to be able to read these just because it does use some advanced grammar as you go. But the, the great thing that these are, or, or the thing these are great for, I should say, is Bennett provides a lot of different stories. Some have to do with history, <clears throat> some are myths, some are about culture. Um, you know, it's a really great way to break free of a traditional uh, Latin textbook and just read something different, something new, and just kind of spice up the Latin classroom if you're a teacher, or if you're someone trying to learn Latin, just kind of branch out and read things that are short, pretty digestible, um, and hopefully at a level that you can understand. So like I always do in these videos, I'll start by reading you <clears throat> uh, part two in Latin, just so you can hear it aloud, not that my pronunciation is, is ever anything fantastic, but you should always try to read this on your own if you can. So if you're a student, try to get a classmate, read it aloud to them, have them read it back to you. That way you can work on your speaking and your listening skills. Um, and then when it does come time to, to read and translate, if you really want to dive into it, try the read and reread method, right? I say this all the time, read through the story or at least this part of the story, write down any problem areas you have um, when you're done reading <clears throat> from sort of start to finish all the way through. Try to um, look up, you know, what problems you had. If it's if it's vocab, that's pretty easy. You can just look it up in the dictionary. If it's grammar, it might take you a little bit more, but try to figure out, you know, where am I going wrong? What form is this? Um, there's a lot of great online tools that will help you with that too. And then try the story again, right? And on the second, the third, fourth time, whatever it might be, you just keep repeating that process and your list of problems should get smaller and smaller until you're able to read the start to finish without any issue, okay? And that's how you know that you understood it and you're ready to kind of move on, okay? So if you haven't done any of that, pause the video, go do it. Um, come back and we'll kind of read through it together. But otherwise, let me start by reading it to you and then we'll unpack it line by line. So the story goes like this. You have per idem tempus in Monte Olimpo aper existit mira magnitudine. Hic misorum arwa vastava. Misorum legati ad croisum venere haec dicentes. Aparvet, o rex, in regione nostra imanis magnitudinis aper. Hic agrestia opera omnia corrumpe. Mite filium tuum et delectos juvenes canesque. Nam belluam et terra nostra tolere volumus. Haec illis pre, uh, precantibus croisus, somnium recordatus, ita responde. Filii quida mei ne amplius feceritus mentione. Non enem illum vobiscum emittere possum. Lidorum autem delectam manum canesque mitam. Auditis misorum precibus intervenit atis. Patrem movere his verbis conator. Antehac, o pater, hoc mihi honestissimum et nobilissimum visum fui. Bello et venatione gloriam parare. Ne igitur me domi retinueris. Quis tandem esse videbor kiwibus? Qualis videbor uxori? Itaque croisus talia responde. Mi fili, in somnio nuper te cuspide ferea interfectum vidi. Ob hanc causam domi te custodio. Okay, so let's pause the video right there. <clears throat> if you um, haven't read it on your own, like I said, go back and do it. But otherwise, let's just take it a line at a time and start unpacking the middle part of this story. Okay, so you remember at this point, the story is about Attis. You have King Croesus. He has a son, Attis. Remember, he saw in a dream that his son was going to get um, killed by an iron weapon. He's invited this stranger in and taken him in. And now we're kind of getting the continuation of the story. And you're going to see how it all starts to unpack. Okay, so this per idem tempus line, um, you could probably translate that as around the same time, <clears throat> right? Just like a timing phrase on Mount Olympus. Now, I will do a side note. This is not Mount Olympus where the, the gods live. This is in modern day Turkey, right? Remember, um, Croesus is the king of Lydia. So this would be in modern Turkey, Mount Olympus, not the Mount Olympus in Greece, okay? But you have um, appeared, right? Existed in Aper, a wild boar. And it's a boar of miraculous size, mira magnitudine, right? Um, that's a phrase you see a lot in these short stories, right? But it just means of, of tremendous or miraculous size, okay? And this thing, this boar, right? It, it was weighing uh, 
uh, wasting, I guess you could say wastaba, laying waste is probably what I meant to say, um, to the lands of the, the Mysians, right? The Mysians. So they, they're, they're saying, hey, we're in trouble. There's this giant wild boar running around eating everything, right? Kind of has vibes of like Hercules, okay? Then you have Misorum Legati, right? So <clears throat> the, the messengers of the Mysians, right? Um, they, um, they came to Croesus, right? Ad Croesum. Um, saying these things, haik dikentes, right? So they're saying these things. You have the present participle there. And they say, O king, O reis, right? Aparuit uh, in regione nostra. So in our region, in our land, in regione nostra, appeared a, a wild boar, right? An aper imanis magnitudinis, right? Of huge or hu of immense size, right? Um, now you might notice uh, at the top, right? When I said the um, legati, they came to Croesus. Venere there is an alternative to venere, right? It's, it's kind of like the poetic version. Um, so you could think of that as uh, venere, not as an uh, uh, infinitive, right? So they came to Croesus and they're saying there's this giant boar running around, right? It's crushing everything. We're in trouble, right? Then you continue of hic agrestia opera omnia corrumpit, right? So it's saying it's destroying all um, all our sort of rustic works, our opera agrestia, right? Our farmland is probably what it's talking about, but it's eating everything, okay? So they make a demand to him. They say mite, right? The imperative send uh, filium tuum, your son, and some uenes delectos, some chosen men, right? And canesque, right? And dogs. So they want dogs, son, his son, and um, Addis, right? And, and these chosen young boys, like send them off, right? Um, they say, non bellum et terra nostra tolere volumus, for um, we want to remove the, the beast, the bellum, right? The beast from our land. So saying we want you to get dogs, get uh, these young men, and get rid of this beast, right? They're asking for help. Then you have <clears throat> um, hike ilis precantibus, uh, crisis, right? Crisis. So you're saying crisis, having um, remembered the dream, somnium recordatus, right? Recalling the dream, he replied, responded, ita, in this way to ilis precantibus, to those praying, right? Those, those kind of begging, asking for help. So he responded uh, with these things, right? In this way, he says these things. And he says, fili equita mei, right? Indeed. Um, uh, uh, he says, um, uh, mentionum, right? Make no more mention, amplius, ne amplius fecheritus mentionum, right? He says, make no more mention of my son, fili mei, right? He says, don't mention my son anymore, right? Don't talk about him. He says, non enim ilum wobiscum emittere possum, for I'm not able, right? Um, non possum, I'm not able to send him out with you. Um, emittere ilum wobus, uh, wobiscum, right? He says, I'm not able to send that one, him, right? Meaning his son, out with you. He's like, I can't do it, right? Because of the stream. And he says, Lidorum autem. So, however, um, he says, Mitam, I will send a, uh, a delectam manum, a chosen band. The manum there is not really a hand, it's like a band of men. You see that um, in like Caesar, for instance, when you're talking about like an army. Um, but a chosen band of Lydians, Lidorum, right, of my people. And I'll send Kanesque, and I'll send dogs, right? So he says, I'll send you everything you asked for. I'm just not sending you my son because he's still afraid. Okay? Then you have this line, you have auditis uh, misorum precibus intervenit atis, right? So atis, he um, intervened, intervened, right? He kind of interrupted or intervened, having heard uh, the prayers of the, the Mysians, right? With the prayers of the Mysians having been heard, you might say, auditis precibus, right? The abbot is there. Um, so he says he heard it and atis intervened, right? Um, and then you have patrum movere his verbis conator. So he tried, conator, right? He tried to move his father, um, meaning like change his mind with these words. So now Addis comes in uh, hot and he starts speaking, right? He's trying to change his father's mind, okay? And he says, ante hoc, o pater, right? Previously, o father, right? He says, hoc mihi honestissimum et nobilissimum visum fuit. So this seemed to me the most honest, the honestissimum and the most noble, right? And he's talking about what what felt to him the best thing to do. He says, parare gloriam, um, to prepare, or sorry, to obtain glory with bello et venatione, with war and the hunt. So he says, up until this point, I thought that this is the most, um, you know, the most uh, honest and, and worthwhile thing to do, to obtain glory through warfare and, and hunting, right? So he says, ne igitor me domi retu, uh, retinueris. He says, therefore, do not keep me uh, at home. <clears throat> right? May Domi says, don't keep me at home. I want to go out and earn glory, right? And he says, quis tandem esse we uh, debor kiwibus, right? What so he says, what, uh, finally, tandem, what, what will I seem uh, to be to the citizens, 
right? So esse videbo, I will seem to be to the citizens. He says, what am I going to look like or who am I going to look like, right? Qualis videbo uxori. What sort of um, man, you kind of have to imply qualis, right? What sort, of, what sort of man will I seem to my wife? So he's saying, you can't keep me locked up in here. I'm going to look like a coward, right? You have to let me go out and help these people. He says, the citizens are going to think I'm a coward and my wife will too. How am I going to face them, right? So Addis really wants to go. And then you have Itakwe, and this is the final chunk. You have Itakwe, Croesus, Talia responded. So and so, Croesus, he, he responded as such, right, in this way, he responds. And he says, mi fili, right, my son. Uh, insomnio nuper, so recently in a dream, te cuspide ferea interfectum widi. So the widi is I saw. So I saw you um, recently in a dream, having been killed, right, interfectum, um, having been killed by a cuspide ferea, by an iron weapon. Right? So he says, I saw you in this dream, um, killed by a weapon. I don't want that to happen. Right? So he says, Obhan Kausam Domi take custodio. For this reason, right? Obhan Kausam. He says, for this reason, um, I'm guarding you at home. Custodio Domi te. So he says, I'm going to keep you at home or sort of guard you at home. Okay? So that's um, what we're calling part two. There's a, a finale, right? The grand finale you're going to see. But again, it's a fun story. You're seeing Addis. You're seeing how Croesus is trying to protect him. And now we see that, again, you can't outrun your fate. That's a key idea. Um, sort of the Greek thought process with the fates and, and oracles. The oracle says something will happen. You can bet it's going to happen. So in trying to protect his son, you're going to see he's going to let him go. And we'll find out that he is going to get killed, right? That's the whole, the whole point of this, okay? We're not there yet, but that's going to be in part three. We'll finish that in the...